All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a new week, chilly morning, of course, it's cold, and we are here to give you some moments of the reality Kenya. My name is Simi Kenya, and as usual, we are live from the, uh, from the landed corner, and it's a Labor Day, of course, first of May. People are celebrating their jobs, their works, and their service to the nation, and we are here also with the deputy party leader of Safina Party, Honorable Wakili Willis Otieno Piki Piki Ponki. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. Uh -huh. We meet in uh, very sad days for yes. our people. Uh -huh. uh, and as much as it's Labor Day today, yeah. the outlook of the country is very gloom. Uh -huh. We have lost more than 71 Kenyans in Maimayu. Uh -huh. We've lost more than 25 in the boat accident in uh, Garissa. Yeah. We've lost more than 12 Kenyans in the IED attack mm -hmm. in Elwak. Yeah. We have lost uh, uh, more than 10 people in the floods in Madare. Mm -hmm. And we've lost also several others across the country. Yeah. So we are talking of just out of a national natural disaster. Mm -hmm. We have lost an average now of more than 170 Kenyans. Yeah. And the numbers keep going up. Mm -hmm. We are also meeting today on a Labor Day when a majority of our people our young people don't have jobs. Yeah. Uh, people have been losing their jobs as well, mm -hmm. and losing their livelihoods because of Kenya Kwanzaa's failed economic policies. Yeah. Their economy is shrinking and there's nothing they can do. Mm -hmm. The outlook of the country is not good at all. Yeah. You, we are just guaranteed that tomorrow will be more painful again than yesterday was. Yeah. And at such times, and we must also note that many Kenyans have stood out for fellow Kenyans. Mm -hmm and provided support to our people yeah. uh, to try to mitigate mm -hmm. the pain they are going through. You've seen Eric Omondi in Madare with yeah. his boat. Yeah. You've seen Hanifa, this young lady on yeah. the Twitter, yes. ex, who has been mobilizing, crowdsourcing sourcing for support mm -hmm. to take Madare to other affected parts. Yeah. You've seen Mr. Kaumbura in uh, Runda, yeah. also. who has come out to be very active in supporting the the people are affected yeah. in the floods. Mm -hmm. There is also this young lady Jerry, mm -hmm. also doing a good job in Madare. Yeah. And other Kenyans who we may not mention are doing it in their small way. And what this is showing us is that the government has failed to respond. Yeah. And Kenyans have taken the issue in their own hands. Mm -hmm. uh, the National Disaster Center has not been mobilized, yeah. activated to respond to this issue. And you know some people say that why are we criticizing government they did bring the floods yeah we admit they did bring the floods mm -hmm. but we are calling them out for their response yeah the emergency response the emergency response that is what we are calling them out mm -hmm. when you see gashagua going to maimayo on yeah. a chopper yes. and there's nothing is taking there yeah we are not seeing mobilization of the nys of the military yeah of the emergency rescue units to go out there to respond. Yeah. You are not declaring this a national disaster. Yeah, sure. You've left it to Red Cross and uh, the public spirited Kenyans to carry the burden yeah. of uh, this pain. Mm -hmm. Whereas you are the ones who collect taxes. Red Cross doesn't collect taxes yeah. from Kenyans. Yeah. Red Cross receives donations from public spirit individuals. Yeah. We have also given our contribution, we are giving our contribution to Red Cross yeah. to just help them in their <coughs> efforts to respond to the emergency situations that is emerging. Yeah. So government that collects taxes, that has set aside money for emergencies, have done nothing. Yeah. They are trying now to gaslight Kenyans to focus on the counties, that the counties are not responding. Mm -hmm. The same counties, they have not released to them disbursements, even for the emergencies. They are almost two months behind schedule when it comes to releasing funds to the counties. Yeah. So even the counties' funds are tied. Mm -hmm. What do you expect of a county governor? Uh, when of Kiambu, for example, yes. to re how can he effectively respond to the emergency in Maimai mm -hmm. when he has not received disbursed funds for, for the months. last two months? Yeah. He can't do anything. He can only go there and take a picture like yeah. everybody else. Yeah. The person who has not released the funds, disbursed the funds, is the national government. So that is where we must call the blame. Yeah. And the blame is not that there was a flood or there were rains. Mm -hmm. The blame is your response to the catastrophe mm -hmm. is one thing. Yeah. It will do better. And doing better would mean you mobilize all the emergency response units in this country mm -hmm. to adequately respond to this issue. Yeah. 
mobilize our military for if, if need be. Mm -hmm. They have sufficient equipment personnel yeah, to that rescue. can rescue and <coughs> provide support. Yeah. Can bring NYS if they've been trained. Mm -hmm. Set up the activate the National Disaster Center. Yeah. Let them respond. Declare this a national emergency. And then you must allocate funds uh, for that response. Yeah. Maybe they're refusing to re declare this a national emergency mm -hmm. because they've misappropriated all the money that would have been they will be required to, to allocate or assign to this uh, emergency response. Yeah. So their failure to act is what we are calling out. Yeah. And that failure to act is leading us to losing lives of Kenyans. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is this. The life that has been lost can never be recovered. That is gone. Yeah. Your failure to act is causing untold suffering and pain to those who are affected by these floods. Yeah. Those who are out there living in the cold. Those who have lost their property. Those who cannot access their homes, yeah. those who are marooned in the middle of waters, yeah. they are left to their own. It is Kenyans with their bare hands trying to, to find a way to rescue yeah. and provide help. And this is quite unfortunate. Yeah. That is why it's important that a government must be responsible. You notice David D. yesterday said the government is like an agony aunt. Yes. I mean, <laughs> government <coughs> is a trustee. It's yes. holding. Those people in government yeah. hold those positions in trust for the people. Mm -hmm. And the people have paid taxes. All those Kenyans you've seen, wherever they are, all of them pay taxes in one shape or another. Mm -hmm. And if the people in whose trust and for whose benefit you hold those poor offices yeah. require an agony aunt, yes. you must be an agony aunt. You cannot be so insensitive that in the time of pain and suffering yes. that our people are going through, yeah. you tell them that you don't care. You actually say not to them, I don't care, I'm not responsible, I'm not your agony aunt, you can do it whatever you want. Yeah. You need to be an agony aunt in such situations. You must show compassion, you must show concern, you must show care, and you must serve the people with kindness. You must now extend a compassionate hand to respond and mitigate, yeah. reduce the pain that the people are going through. Yeah. As Jimmy Wanjigi said, we are now in a situation that we are led by somebody who is known as I don't care, Ruto. Yeah. Despite the pain, despite the challenges, despite the sufferings of our people, doesn't care. Your life continues as usual. Yeah. He will hold his big IDA conference in Nairobi. Yes. He will proceed to hold his cabinet meeting in State House, State House having yeah. tea mm -hmm. and mandazis. Yes. He doesn't care that people can't even go to school, people cannot access their homes, people are living in uh, squalid conditions, yeah. people are being rained on overnight, people are being swept by floods, yeah. people are being swept by landslides. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about the people. So the trust that he was put for to hold, he's not acting to the benefit yeah. of the intended beneficiaries yeah. of that trust. Yeah. And that is quite unfortunate. And I don't care William Ruto yeah. has led us to the problems we are facing today. Yeah. And uh, I think um, during the summit also, I think the summit came amidst all these uh, you know, disasters and catastrophe. And it is alleged that the reports have it that the military of the KDF spent almost 38 million to clean cabros and, and windows of KICC ahead of that meeting, despite Kenyans and citizens going through these particular troubles of... You know, no, that's what we say, a question of prioritization. Mm -hmm. When it comes to prioritization, you are losing lives here. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have money, but the little money that you have, yeah. how do you prioritize its use? In this particular case, you need to prioritize emergency response over your own comfort. Yes. KCC has always been there. Yes. It's not going anywhere. Yes. I don't think the meeting would not have taken place if the windows were not cleaned at yeah. 38 million Kenya shillings. Yeah. That meeting will have still continued. Why are you spending a lot of money in Lajis and yet you are doing nothing to save an emergency situation? Yeah. You need to prioritize. Consider your priorities. This level of incompetence in this Kenya Kwanzaa is appealing. It's actually shocking yeah. that people in their right minds mm -hmm. will prioritize cleaning windows of 38 million over saving Kenyans who are going through yeah. dire situations caused by the incompetence of Kenya Kwanzaa. Yeah. That is what we are saying. It can't, it can't continue. But you went to Maimai and prayed there. You yesterday. see, what we are simply saying, prayers is not enough. <laughs> yes. You should have gone to Maimai and we see a massive deployment. Yeah. Not just in Maimayo, yeah. we will see a response in Tana River, yeah. Garissa. Yes. 
we see a response in Madari. We see an active response in any other parts. Go to Kitengela. Yeah. Right now in Kahawa, people are marooned. They cannot even come out of their homes. Yeah. In Runda, people are walking out of, cannot access their homes. Yeah. They are being swept by waters. And it's happening across the country. Yeah. Sindo, the old town is submerged by water. Yeah. So you need to have a national deployment across. So by the time you are visiting the sites, you are not visiting those sites to take a picture. Mm -hmm. Visit those sites when you you are rolling out a comprehensive emergency response yeah. across the country that is going to mitigate the pain and the suffering that the people are going through at the moment. Otherwise, going to my mind and to take nothing across the rest of the country, or even to that my mind. Yeah. You are not helping them. In fact, you are just using the people there as props mm -hmm. for a port opportunity. Yeah. And we should not allow that. We are, this is not a question of campaign. This is purely a case where you need to save people's lives yeah. and to mitigate their pain and suffering. You don't even need to appear. Yeah. People need to feel the presence of government in their lives, helping to alleviate the suffering they're going through. Yeah. He's not doing that. So taking a photo in my mail, Without and, yet, and then you walk out and you leave them in, in, to live for that night, sleep that night in darkness, yeah. in pain under the torrid drains. Yeah. Then you tell them to go and take Kuduma number <laughs> to, get <laughs> to get services, <laughs> to get their IDs, those who've lost their ID cards and yeah. set up a temporary Duma center yeah. to get their ID cards. Yes. So you're just looking at them as voters mm -hmm. to come and vote for you when the day comes so that they don't lose their ID cards, they're able to vote. Yeah. I mean, that is what you're saying, it's, not, it's bullshit. Yeah. And we must call Kanyakumaka's bullshit for what it is. Yeah. Huh? And I don't care, Ruto is not good for this country. We are going to suffer more. And I've always told you, yeah. tomorrow is going to be more painful than today. Mm -hmm. Today was more painful than yesterday. Mm -hmm. That is Kanyakumaka's. Yeah. So it means the decibels of pain just keep increasing. Yeah. We are suffering more and more in the hands of these people. Yeah. Very soon we are going to see them, going, they are going to publish the finance bill. And I promised you, yeah. you are going to see an increase in taxes, levies, charges in across area. the board. Yeah. That is going to happen. So they keep increasing our taxes, levies and charges, but the quality of services we are getting from them is wanting. Yeah. It's not something to write home about. In yeah. fact, it's for their own comfort, not to, for the service of the people yeah. and humanity. And uh, Kenyans now need to pay much attention to their members of parliament. Mm. And I urge all Kenyans to write text messages yes. to their members of parliament, tell them we are watching you yes. if you are their attempt to increase our <laughs> taxes, our levies and charges on anything yeah. in this new finance bill. Yes. We expect to see the government that responds to our present economic situation. We don't have money. Yeah. You cannot raise our taxes. We will not survive. Yeah. Last year I did mention to you that their finance bill, their budget was ambitious. They were meant to collect an average of two nine billion per month. Per month, yes. They have average what I told you. I told you they're averaging one seventy billion. Yeah. Up to now, they have averaged a collection of one seventy one billion. I uh, only missed it by one billion. Yeah. It has not gone. It has not gone. Beyond. And I told you. And yet they increased. Remember the previous ones for Uhuru, where it was doing one seventy billion. Yes. It was on the charges, the taxes. At a lower rate, VAT on fuel was at 8%. Mm -hmm. These guys increased it to 16%. They doubled it. They doubled it. Yeah. Pay as you earn, they increased the band for those who earn more than 500,000 yes. to 35%. Mm -hmm. And other plethora of increased charges and levies and taxes. Yeah. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. They still barely made it to the same level as well. That, that and level. Because the tax bracket, those who qualify for paying taxes, their numbers were. They are, they are reducing, it's yes. decreasing. Yeah. So you depress the economy, you can't collect more. Yeah. And the more you raise the taxes, the less you are going to collect. Yeah. It's called the lava flow, mm -hmm. lava flow, mm -hmm. as I told you. Yeah. So even now, what they are going to propose will not work. And they will increase it from what they had. They will increase and still it will not work. Yeah. They must look at the economy and find out what the problem is and what can you do to boost production. Yeah. Don't think there's money in people's pockets that you're going to collect by increasing taxes. They don't have money. Yeah. You only raise more taxes if you boost productivity. Yeah. Increase productivity, there's more money circulating in the economy, mm -hmm. you'll be able to collect more taxes. Wow. Thank you.
Wow, thank you so much, Naibu. One last word to Team Piki Piki Ponki and uh, Team Safina Party as we wind up. And of course, they are a message of uh, encouragement during this uh, season of heavy rains and floods. Team Piki Piki Ponki, Team Safina, Team Piki Piki Ponki, we are growing, we keep strong. I love the energy on the walls. Let us keep engaging. In fact, those who come with their nurses on the wall, you know what to do. And you've been doing it very well and effectively. Kudos. I love that. I urge all our Kenyan people to be each other's keepers. Let's provide support where we can to alleviate, even if it's only to one person. Just try to alleviate the pain and suffering that this one person is going through. Because remember, Kenya Kwanza cannot do anything to us. We are on our own in this particular situation. We are going to carry each other to help reduce the pain and suffering that our people are going through. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Kenyans who are going through the hardship caused by the have of course by the rains, my sincere sympathies and uh, prayers that we do overcome these challenges in good time. I also urge all Kenyans to try to take personal responsibility and avoid exposure to the ravaging rains where possible. If you can manage to go to a raised ground, if you manage to avoid crossing a flowing river or trying to cross a bridge when the river is overflowing, please do so. Do not expose yourself to danger. Let us take personal responsibility and mitigate the impact that these ravaging rains and floods are causing to our people. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Wow. Thank you so much, Naibu. Thank you. Of course, everyone, have a blessed day and may God bless you. Happy, happy Labor Day. Thank you so much.